The last thing, or at least the last thing that I'm going to quickly address, and then I really want to go to questions and see what you guys want to talk about, um, is about stage-appropriate teaching and, and parenting. And what do I mean by that? Um, this is kind of like the elaborate version. I'm going to save you guys this because <laughs> this is really theoretical. Um, this is uh, Ken Wilbur's model uh, of integral lines and levels. It's different developmental lines from, for instance, your cognitive developmental line uh, to your uh, moral development line, your ego needs, your emotional development. So we've got all these different parts of us that can develop. Our tendency is to see the kid as one whole. You know, you are developed at this level, but there's virtually nobody who is completely synchronous. Almost everybody is asynchronous, like this area is really developed, this maybe a little bit less, and that goes back and forth. And what turns out to be that the further out of the average you are, the bigger the asynchronicity is going to be. That's just statistics, kind of one-on-one -on -one that it makes sense that they get further apart. And within each of these areas, we can make it really complicated, but like the simple way of looking at it is that there's three stages of development. You've got the pre-conventional level, the conventional level, and the post-conventional level. So what do I mean by that? So say, for instance, you're, um, you're learning how to create art. You're learning how to paint. The first step you're in is pre-conventional. You have no idea how to do it. You have no idea how to do it. You just do something. Then the next step is going to be that you're going to get to the conventional stage. You learn the techniques, you learn how it's done, you learn how to control yourself, you know what, what to do with it. And some people, after they reach the conventional stage, reach the post-conventional stage. You got like the impressionists, for instance. They said, well, and actually a lot of impressionists could do really good realistic paintings. But then they said, I've got an even better way than realism to show reality. And that's this way. This is the way I look at the world. That's post-conventional. They could do the conventional, but they went beyond it. Challenge is what um, Ken Wilber called the pre-post fallacy. And the pre-post fallacy is that sometimes it's hard to distinguish the pre-conventional level from the post-conventional level. Um, at Sotheby's, uh, one of the international um, auction houses, they auctioned off a three-year-old's painting for 65,000 pounds. Um, and that was because it was accompanied by an art critic's description of the deep thoughts that the artist must have had <laughs> while creating that painting. And that's a pre-post fallacy because the kid definitely didn't have those thoughts. Um, those were attributed by somebody else. It's just sometimes something that looks beyond conventional. It's not conventional anymore, so it looks different. But the difference is, is it very intentionally different or is it just randomly different? And that is what you see with gifted in some of the cases. There's this disharmony and there's this fallacy because most often, cognitively, they're post-conventional. They know how to think logically and they know how to like, think almost beyond um, logically. But if you talk about, for instance, ego development or even moral development, sometimes they're pre-conventional. They don't even know how it's done. They don't know how to control themselves. But they will tell a cognitive story to go with it. But um, like one of, if you talk about moral development, Kohlberg has written a lot about this. And the pre-conventional level could be best described if, um, if you weren't caught, you weren't wrong. Like that's like the moral development level. Um, it's a pretty risky combination with being really smart. Because you're really good at not getting caught. But then you falsely start believing if you're at that ego development level, you were never wrong either. And the, the way you guide kids is so different at each of these levels. Um, let's see. Uh, so yeah, exactly like I said, they're post-conventional cognitive, but self-regulation, maybe they're not post-conventional. And for instance, when we're going to do a project, a project, like the conventional approach is to have a step-by-step -step process. You know, we're going to do this project for eight weeks, and first you write the title, and then you're going to make a summary, and you're going to do all these things. So now the kid comes up to you. And says, oh man, all those steps, I'm beyond that. You know, I, I don't do those steps. I'm, I'm, my mind is way beyond this. I want to just, I want to just intuitively go for it. And you're like, wow, cool. You know, this kid is post-conventional. He's beyond the point of needing these kind of step-by-step -step approaches. Well, you know, the proof of the pudding is in the, the tasting. If the kid comes after four weeks with a brilliant piece of work, then yes, he's post-conventional because he didn't need the step-by-step -step approach and comes up with a brilliant intuitive approach. But if after four weeks he didn't even get a pencil on the paper because he doesn't know where to start, 
then probably he's pre-conventional because he doesn't even know how to, how to regularly do it, let alone to, let alone to go beyond it. But he's using his post-conventional cognitive skills, his smartness, to try to get away with it. To try to describe it as though he's post-conventional, but that's just a way to get freedom. I just want less limitations. So this is a, a challenge with kids, to see like where are they post and where are they pre-conventional or conventional and how to help them. Because sometimes also kids are conventional and you need to pull them beyond that. No, you don't need a step-by-step -step approach. You've done it like 10 times with a step-by-step -step approach. You're going to do it without because you need to figure out how to be without the steps. That could be a step as well. So, at the pre-conventional stage, you know, the world view is if I wasn't caught, I wasn't wrong. And at the conventional stage, I am trying to find out what the right way is. Just teach me how to do it. But the approach is completely different. At a post-conventional level, it becomes like what gives the best result for all. So it becomes much more a goal-oriented approach. So when I start trying to parent or teach one of these kids, at a pre-conventional level, it's really important to have clear consequences. Because they don't oversee the consequences themselves. They somehow tend to not really live towards them. So we need to make sure that when they're wrong, they're caught. They get feedback. But when they're in the conventional state, they don't need it anymore. They just need clear rules. This is what I expect of you. And this is when you are or when you're not adhering to that. This is what goes wrong in a number of high schools, for instance. The beginning of high school is, okay, you know, kids, um, you're all here. Awesome, your students now. These are the five rules that are here. Questions, no questions, let's go. Because high school is assuming if I'm clear about my rules and the students are conventional, they will execute them. But then you've got this one kid who's raised hands like, what happens if I don't abide by the rules? So he's actually asking a pre-conventional question, what are the consequences? And if there are no consequences, well then probably there weren't any rules to begin with, right? <laughs> then it's a preference on your end. Um, so here we see a disconnect. Some kids actually don't make it past the pre-conventional self-regulation state. And this is one of the biggest things that makes a difference in success in gifted kids. Uh, some of you might know the uh, marshmallow test. Have you ever heard of that? It's one of the most sadistic psychological experiments ever conceived. You take a six-year-old, you put him in front of the table and you say, here's one marshmallow. And if you leave it on the table for 10 minutes, you're going to get a second one. And the question is, can the kid control himself for that period? Well, given a relatively same range of IQs, uh, this has a huge predictor for academic success. Kids who can leave the marshmallow are way more likely to be successful throughout their school career and in their working career than the ones that could not. So that self-regulation bit is really important. The challenge is that um, as guidance therapists, as parents, um, we often approach it post-conventional. We discuss the end result and we appeal to empathy. I would feel really happy if you would just get to this end result. Oh, you didn't do it. That makes me really sad. And then, you know, the pre-conventional kid is, okay, good for you. Because <laughs> uh, as a parent and educator, um, each stage thinks it's the only way. The post-conventional stage tends to think the only way to parent is post-conventional. And the only way a teacher tends to be, if he's post-conventional, is teaching post-conventional. So what we do is we apply our level onto the children. Because we're post-conventional, we will do post-conventional interventions, regardless of whether the kid is or is not post-conventional. Same for a conventional teacher, by the way. It's where some gifted kids get stuck as well. They're post-conventional while their teacher is still conventional. It's really important that we take the responsibility of measuring up to their level. What do you right, need right now? What's your interaction? So this is where I see that, that sometimes, especially gifted parents often, and, and teachers will tend to be in this last phase, uh, tend to st stick pretty long to this, while some kids might need one of these. But we hate this. <laughs> this is no fun. I don't do this anymore, all these stupid rules and consequences. I don't like them. <coughs> so why would I give them to my kid? Well, because my kid is at a developmental level where he needs them. So this tends to clear up a lot of things in, um, in parenting.